YouTube family, what's going on guys? It's been a long time. Um, man, this video has been a difficult one for me and I hope you guys like it. Um, this video is not how I wanted it to present it, but literally I've been sitting on this for months. And um, I just, I, I feel the need to just put it out there. Um, if you guys like it, you know, maybe I can do a part two or part three. If you have questions, obviously leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but I'm just going to proceed with what I have here. Uh, honestly, I'm not necessarily happy with how it's coming together. But again, I think the 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 message is important, not necessarily the how pretty it looks. Right. So here's where I am. Um, so guys, I acquired a magnificent C anemone um, almost a year ago. It's been a journey uh, for sure. And I really wanna just use this to kind of document my experience. And if anyone is even considering keeping uh, one of these C anemones, just some things to look out for. But I will tell you full stop, um, if you have not kept um, advanced marine aquariums for any length of time, and when I say advanced, I'm basically saying a uh, coral reefs, you know, LPS, SPS corals for any length of time successfully where they are thriving. Hard pass on this one for sure. Um, these anemones do not acclimate well to uh, to captive systems and they don't ship well either. Uh, and the survival rate, unfortunately, is abysmal for this animal, guys. Um, they just generally don't make it more than six months. Uh, in a system and so this video is just really to set that expectation that should you venture down the path of getting one of these animals that you're in a position of success because these sea anemones are not uh, as of this recording anyway they are not um, aquacultured in the same way that bubble tips are you know most mag anemones are coming directly out of the ocean so that's just food for thought with that said, I'm going to stop rambling. Let's just get right into it. So um, during the planning stages of this aquarium, and just to actually take you guys back a little bit, um, the aquariums that I've purchased really since I've kind of gotten back into the hobby uh, has always been planted aquariums. I'm very impressed with their products. This is not a sponsor video, by the way, just a FYI. This is my own personal you know, opinion. Um, but I've purchased their off the shelf systems, meaning just going into a store, seeing something and saying, Hey, yeah, I'm going to buy that. Let me put that in the back of the truck or, you know, deliver it to my home, whatever the case may be. This is the first time that I actually, you know, got with a dealer and had a custom aquarium made by them and very happy with, uh, the, the end result. Uh, the reason why I'm even bringing that up guys is to just tell you that during the building phase of this aquarium i use it as an opportunity to research uh, the inhabitants that was going to be in you know this 300 uh, plus gallon system i knew for sure for sure that i wanted to keep a magnificent sea anemone um, for really a couple of reasons one you don't really see them in captivity um, all that much especially in home systems and then two um, like i mentioned earlier this is the natural host for the most popular clownfish, uh, you know, in the hobby, which is the Ocellaris clownfish. And because of that, um, because of those reasons, I certainly wanted to, to keep it. Now, keeping magnificent sea anemones uh, always scared me because they have a reputation of being very difficult to keep. And this reputation is true. It, it's it's accurate. They are. Um, but really, it's it's the acclimation. Uh, to the environment um, and they don't ship well um, and oftentimes they come infected with a, a bacterial infection now there is a treatment protocol that you can find online called uh, it's 
Ciproflaxin or Cipro for short. Um, this is not a miracle cure, guys. Um, I, I know I, I've browsed some forums and people are talking about this stuff as if, you know, now because of it, we can keep any animal. Cipro will kill a sea anemone. It actually caused mine to bleed. It is, however, the lesser of two evils. Either you have a dead animal potentially, or you have a bleached animal that has a fighting chance to come back. And that was my story. So while this aquarium was being built, um, I started doing lots of research on the magnificent sea anemones, um, their ultimate size, their requirements, that type of stuff. And you know, it's the things that you guys probably already know. They love tons of flow, very flow, but lots of it, lots of light. And they like to be up high uh, within the aquarium. Now, the last point is very important um, because I've also seen in aquariums where these anemones are on the back glass at the very top. Not obviously an ideal location um, for the anemone because of danger and obviously for the aquarist because it doesn't look natural sitting on the back of your glass. The way to minimize uh, and prevent this, guys, is placing your anemone on an island, um, the anemone island, if you will. Um, and what this is, guys, is just an area in your tank where the anemone has, for the most part, um, what it needs as far as flow and light, but it cannot see a path to higher ground. That's super important. So that means that the anemone can't touch anything that's higher than it meaning that there's no glass, there's uh, there's not any rock work or anything that is tentacles or anything uh, on the anemone that it can touch. Because if it can, if it senses a path to higher ground, it's gonna go to that path. The only way that this anemone uh, should be able to get to higher ground is by going down. And for the most part, they're never gonna do that. Now, I will tell you that if they are not happy in their location, they do, like all anemones, have the capability, guys, of releasing themselves from the rock, kind of expanding and allowing the current to take them somewhere else. In a home aquarium, of course, this is dangerous just because, you know, oftentimes these anemones find themselves in a power head. Now, with any anemone with a potent sting, power heads are always dangerous um, just because uh, the theory is, is that the anemone can, you know, unfortunately through getting, you know, mangled into a power head, the anemone can release their nematocysts, which are the stinging cells, into the water column, and all non-clownfish could potentially be victims of this by, of course, pumping this water through their gills. It can cause their gills to swell, and the animal ultimately can suffocate. And you've heard, or I've heard of stories um, like this online, so be careful with that. The second thing that you're going to be looking for in uh, your magnificent sea anemone uh, is signs of deflation. Now, when an anemone deflates, guys, this is the anemone really pushing all the water out of it and taking in new water. This is very common when you introduce an anemone into a new environment. For magnificent sea anemones, this is a telltale sign for them. So I would tell you that after introducing your anemone to its new home, it may deflate once or twice or even a couple times. Um, keep an eye out on it, um, but that is not generally a good sign. If it deflates after you've had it in your system for a day or so, you wanna treat it. This is what a deflated anemone looks like. This is inside of my tank. This is also a deflated anemone, and this is inside of the treatment uh, or the hospital tank. Um, when you treat an anemone with Cipro, all kind of weird things happen. You will see a lot of gelatinous kind of substance come out of the anemone. Um, you will also probably see some black flaky stuff. That, blakey, that black flaky stuff uh, that's coming out of the anemone is it's zooxanthellae. Um, so these are the uh, these are the the animals or the algae, if you will, that live in the anemone's tissue. Also gives them color. Also gives them nutrients in between feedings. Uh, a bleached anemone is an anemone that has no way of getting any type of nutrition other than direct feeding. So that is something to be aware of. A bleached anemone is, um, they're on their way out, guys, to be honest. Not to say that you can't bring one back. I'm proof of that. It just takes 
a lot of hard work to do. In my case, um, it took eight months of feeding this anemone every day and waiting 45 minutes because this animal was so weak, it literally took, and this is not an exaggeration, but it literally took 45 minutes for the animal to feed. And this is why I'm running the clownfish away from it. Because the last thing that you want is the clownfish to steal the animals, or steal the animals, steal the food from a weakened animal already. It can actually accelerate the animal's death because it's using all of its energy to try to get nutrition into its body. And if the clownfish are still in it, it's a double whammy, guys. So, food for thought on that. Um, water conditions you want to make sure that your water conditions are good all the time uh again i would I, i'm saying sps quality uh that doesn't mean that if you've never kept a sps tank that you can't keep a magnificent sea anemone i'm just telling you that that is that is for me if i was giving any advice to anyone that would be a prerequisite um now the good news is that once these animals are established in your aquarium then they tend to do well as long as, you know, nothing major happens, nothing major changes uh, within the aquarium. They are very sensitive to slight changes. For instance, uh, I made a, a change to my lighting schedule, not even on my Orphix. And by the way, the lights that I'm using on this tank, I have four Orphix um, V4 G2s, and then I have three uh, Kessel A360s uh, for shimmer. And just a little bit of punch and and not par because these lights are par monsters but uh, a little punch in spectrum but i did change um the ramp up schedule uh of just the a360s and that caused my anemone to move and it hadn't moved since i put them back in the tank uh which was you know probably around the middle of march so they are very sensitive to those things again luckily uh the animal did didn't move off of the rock but uh yeah, just just really food for thought, guys. These are not, like I said, these are not beginning beginner anemones, and I can't talk. These are not beginner anemones at all. Um, if you're considering one of these animals, really do your research. Make sure you're equipped. Uh, but I would tell you that if you have not kept marine advanced marine systems for you know any length of time without any success, hard pass on these guys. Like seriously. Uh, otherwise. If you believe that you're equipped, uh, once healthy, they are amazing animals and beautiful to your uh, beautiful addition to your aquarium. So anyway, guys, thank you again for watching. Um, again, this video didn't turn out how I wanted it to be, but I thought the content was more important than the actual delivery. So thank you guys again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you do like this type of content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.